Hello and welcome to another one of our auction review videos. This time we're going to focus on the Spices auction that was held on the 26th of March 2022. Usual format, we're going to hand select a few of the bites that we think give the best picture of the auction that was held and we'll finish with the one bite that, if I could have picked any of them, the one that I would like to have taken home at the end of the day. So, first lot, in fact first two lots are a pair of very sexy little Yamahas, uh, American models in fact. The first one, lot 536, is a 1972 LT2 100. So a very, very attractive, pretty little two-stroke machine, 97cc. These were produced in only 1972 and 73 only for the American market and were part of Yamaha's dual sport range, so off-road and on-road capabilities. Uh, aimed at the younger rider, this particular model, the bike we've got here was a 2019 import, so only recently brought into the UK. Engine has been totally rebuilt. Frame, tinware, um, mudguards, etc. have all been repainted, so it presents very well. Uh, new old stock seat fitted as well, very smart. All in all, it just needs a little bit of sorting to get it ready for the road. It's not UK registered yet either, but it does come with its Nova, so a little bit of work to do. Estimate on this, just 1,200 to 1,500 pounds. Uh, it achieved, all in, 1,380 pounds, including premiums. Now, the second of those two Yamahas was the big brother of that LT2. So, lot 537, a 1972 RT3. So, this time, a 351cc two-stroke machine. So, a bit more muscle, a bit more usable. Good for at least 28 horsepower, these bikes, with a top speed of around 80 miles an hour. Again, very attractive, similar lines to the smaller machine we've just seen. This time it's a five-speed bike, but interestingly, they had a, a sort of overdrive on top gear just to give it that extra push to get it up to the 80 miles an hour. Also came with Yamaha's Auto Lube uh, system of uh, oiling system, um, oil injection if you like, so you didn't have to self-do it every time you filled up the tank because it's a two-stroke. Again, recently imported, just 2017 when this was brought from America into the UK. Engine has undergone a full rebuild, it's got fresh paint, it presents very nicely indeed. This time it's been recommissioned, it's up and running, it's ready to use. Doesn't have a V5 with it, so we'll need UK registering first before you take it on the road. But it does have its Nova and everything that goes with it. Estimate on this, three to four thousand pounds. It achieved three thousand two hundred twenty pounds, including premiums. Next bike, lot 534, another sort of enduro off-road bike. Uh, 1986 Moto Marini Kangaroo 350cc. Now, I've got a bit of a soft spot for marinas, and this is one of the later ones, mid 80s bike. They'd already been successful as road machines, having first come out in the early 70s with the three and a half. The Lambertini design V twin engine with its heron heads, the combustion chamber held within the pistons. Very lightweight machine, around 30 horsepower, only about 130 kilograms uh, wet through. So, Really usable, quite good power to weight ratio. Um, this particular bike was introduced later in the range, so into the 80s now. There was two off-road bikes, a 3.5, 350cc and a 500cc version. This particular one is a 3.5, so it's a 350. It requires some recommissioning. It looks like it's all there. There's no paperwork with it, but it's ready to be used off-road once you have got it fixed up. So estimate on this bike, just 800 to 1200 pounds. It achieved slightly underestimate 747 pounds 50 pence including premiums a pretty good bargain there i think Right, a British bike now, let's move on to something different. Lot 501, 1963 BSA C15 SS80 Sports Star. Now, the C15 was first introduced in 1958 and it was a, a unit construction machine, overhead valve, four stroke. This was the basis of a range of single cylinder unit construction bikes between 250 and 500 cc. C15, very popular machine. Um, the sportier version, this one, the Sports Star SS80, was introduced in 1961, and it was a slightly hotter version than the standard 15, so it had uh, slightly hotter cams, higher compression, 
uh, and a large carburettor, it was guaranteed to achieve 80 miles an hour, hence the name SS80. Um, this particular bike looks a pretty, pretty smart proposition. It's a project bike, so it needs recommissioning. It looks to be all there, uh, pretty complete, like I say, it's got its V5. Estimate on this, 1,200 to 1,500 pounds, 1,495 including premiums, so pretty good. Sticking with the British bikes then, lot 551 next, a beautiful post-vintage pre-war machine. So it's a 1927 Model 18. Now, the Model 18 was launched in 1922 and it was the overhead valve version, or the first overhead valve machine that Norton produced. Um, 500cc single cylinder four stroke. These were very fast, very reliable, and a very sporty machine for its period. Built on the success of the 16H, model, the side valve models that went prior to it. The bottom end in fact is the same as those but with a different top end incorporating that overhead valve system. These quite quickly became the most desirable Nortons of the period and they retain that sort of desirability to this date. Very very smart machines. They do command good values going forward. This particular machine then is a 1927 model. It presents very well. It was restored 20 years ago and is in gorgeous condition. Regularly used uh, it's still ready to be ridden on the road and to use straight away. Just gorgeous in the details and how it's done. You can still see that sort of pie crust effect on the bottom of the tank on these bikes. Absolutely gorgeous. Estimate on this, 18 to 20,000 pounds. It achieved 19,550 pounds all in. Next bike, lot 568, is a 1975 Honda CB550. Beautiful inline four cylinder, four stroke machine. Single overhead cam producing around 50 brake horsepower. I suppose the bigger version or the big brother of the twin cylinder 450 that we've got here. Now the CB500 was originally launched in 1971 and then the CB550 was uh, updated and enlarged in 1975 but it still retained those gorgeous but slightly heavy 4 into 4 exhausts that this particular bike is shown in this example more compact and slightly more accomplished version of the CB750, the big brother. These are easier to handle. And this is a USA model here. So it was imported back into the UK in 2018. Uh, and it's only done 500 miles since it was re-imported. It's a little bit scruffy, but very original. Just 12,000 miles in total, believed. So it should be in very good condition mechanically as well. It will need some recommissioning to get it back on the road, but an estimate of just Three to four thousand pounds, it achieved three thousand two hundred twenty pounds, including premium. Now, lot five eight one is a nineteen seventy seven Harley Davidson XLCR one thousand. Now, this particular one is a first year model, and it was a, a brave move by Harley. Really, it was a, a model that was designed to be a sporty bike. Uh, and to compete against some of the European and the Japanese bikes or sports bikes of the day, Harley, obviously known for their big cruisers, this took the engine from the Sportster and put it into a, a more lighter weight sport frame with this little bikini fairing, uh, hump seats, really nice mag wheels, triple discs which were high spec in the time as well and a gorgeous sort of Siamese blacked exhaust. I mean the styling of it, it's a very pretty bike. However, testers of the day weren't that keen on it. It was sort of taking the engine from a cruiser and sticking it in a sports bike frame but it didn't quite achieve its sporty conventional, so it looked very sporty but still felt quite heavy and a little bit lumpy. And they didn't sell very many, they only produced less than 3,000 of these bikes, so they weren't particularly popular. However, they are quite rare and that makes them very collectible today. This particular example is in above average condition, it does need some recommissioning, it's all there, fairly smart. Um, the big point on this though, the gearbox wasn't working correctly. So how much work's involved with that, who knows, but still worth a go. Estimate was pretty tempting, just five to 7,000 pounds on this, and it smashed it. So total it fetched 13,915 pounds, including premium. So a really strong price for this bike. Next bike is a really interesting bike. It's Lot 582, a Honda Britain CB750 SS. Now, to celebrate the success that Phil Reed had in the 1977 inaugural Formula One TT, where he won riding for Honda. Uh, Honda Britain commissioned Colin Seeley to produce some race replicas. Now these aren't to be confused with the Honda Seeley framed bikes, which were really hot and really special. These were simply a cosmetic uh, special edition. So they had special fairings and a paint scheme 
to sort of have that look-alike of the Phil Reed race bike. Now, a number of those were produced, and then Phil Reed fell out with Honda about the royalties for this bike. Now, Honda had got a batch of parts left and didn't know what to do with them, so they carried on making them, but changed the colour scheme and dropped the Phil Reed replica bit. Hence, this particular bike being a Honda Britain CB750 SS. Now, very rare. I've never seen one before. This one is in as new condition. It's been stored, one owner from new. Um, in fact, it's only done one mile in the last 16 years, so it will need some recommissioning, but a very interesting machine of its period. Couldn't look more sort of late 70s if it tried. Estimate just four and a half to five and a half thousand pounds. It achieved 5,290 pounds, including premiums. A more modern machine now, lot 586, a glorious 1990 Norton F1, 600cc rotary engined uh, bike. These were the super sports version of the rotary engine machines that they've been making from the late 70s, which were initially air cooled, uh, popular with the police, the Interpol bike that we're quite familiar with, and then a water cooled machine was produced and wrapped in this gorgeous bodywork, enclosed in a, a proper box section aluminium frame, a very high spec machine with the Brembo brakes. In fact, the standard of the kit that was used on this was as good as, if not better than anything of its competitors at the time. Um, two years production only, so they are very rare bits of kit. Only 140 were made of these bikes. Uh, 94 horsepower they produced, which was pretty good for a 600 back then. In fact, the race bikes, they were doing 150 brake horsepower on these, and they were very successful in various races, including the white Charger and the Isle of Man TT. Very high quality, very high prices in their day as well. £12,700 this bike cost new in 1990. A VFR 750 was just, what, 5700 at the time. So you can see how exclusive they were. This particular bike, just 931 miles on the clock, so barely used. Uh, it's not been ridden for the last 17 years. It's just been stood in a guy's lounge. So if you were going to use it, needed some probably some quite serious recommissioning to get it back on the road, but it should be mechanically very sound. It does have its V5. Estimate 25 to 30,000 pounds on this. It achieved 28,750 pounds, including premium. Now, one bike left. And this is the bike that, if I could have chosen any of them in the auction, the one that I'd love to have taken home. And it's something never seen before, and you've probably never seen one either. A very special machine. It's lot 565, a 1964, Tricati 500. So it's an unusual mixture. We're used to what Tritons or Tripsers, Norvins, those sort of uh, Cafe Racer custom build bikes. But this basis of this machine is a, a 1960 Triumph 5TA Triumph engine mated with a, a 1964 Ducati Mac 1 frame. So a really unusual co combination to have. Very well put together very well, uh, high standard of engineering throughout. It presents really well, regularly used. Uh, was featured in 1992 when it was first completed in, uh, in the magazine, Bike Magazine, and there's a copy of that with the bike itself. Still in wonderful condition, ready to ride, recently recommissioned. Estimate on this, four to 5,000 pounds. It achieved 5,750 pounds, including premium. And for a bike that's totally unique like that, I think that's a bargain, I'd love that one. So. Thanks for watching this video. There'll be more auction videos on the way soon. If you want to check out some of the latest workshop vlogs, go to our Classic Motorcycle Channel 2, and I'll see you again soon.